This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so we are on uh, Hashgach HaZabore, uh, which is part two, chapter five, the open Hashgach by the little letter Dalit. God placed in terms of the nature of each of these forces, these heavenly forces, spiritual forces through which this world is governed. To stand by the post. And to, with strength, fulfill the charge, the position that is given to it. And it will only be pushed off from doing what it's meant to do if another force that God has authorized will overwhelm it, as we'll see in a minute. Derech Mashal, for example. Sara Ilanot, the force that is there to govern and to promote the growth of all the trees, the vegetation in the world. Yishtadel v'yata mitzlach seeking l'notav. It works hard to make sure the trees are all doing well. V'ulam, however. At times, God will empower this force of the winds. And the force of wind will overwhelm the force of the trees. And the wind will then uproot and knock out these trees. And we could see how Avodah how idolatry, that the Rambam writes about this, how it began. Because there are these heavenly forces all under the auspices of God. But if one starts to view them as independent forces, then I might start to worship these forces. If I am a, uh, a grower, so I will worship these forces of the tree, so to speak, in order to make sure that I've got a lot of produce coming. And I forget that ultimately God is the one in charge of everything and we're not allowed to go to the subsidiaries. We have to deal directly with God. It's almost like trying to, blo- trying to bribe the bank teller. But the bank teller is only commissioned to distribute funds of the funds that it has belonging to wherever it belongs to. And you need to go to the top. You need to go to the account owner if you actually want uh, to access different funds. There are many, many levels. We've been discussing how it's like these chain links, one to the other, working its way down into this world. There are those forces, angels, that oversee all of these forces of nature. But the natural world and the natural events, there is that whole world, that whole gezeira decree of gemul. What does the person deserve? And therefore, that's already looking at the individual's merits or demerits. So therefore, even though normally if you plant right lousy seeds, things shouldn't grow well, but if a person has tremendous zechuyot merits, then those seeds might produce incredible offspring. We hear about Yaakov planting in one of the lands where he was, and it produced a tremendous amount, mea sha'arim, a hundred measures. That's where we get the term, the, the neighborhood of mea sha'arim, that's, that's in Yerushalayim. So, and, and at times a person can plant wonderful, high, the, the, the top grade seeds, but if they don't deserve it, then it won't grow. So therefore, we have Aleim over these forces of the normal natural forces. You have Sare, the forces of Gzeiro, Tagamul, decrees of the compensation that come to a person based upon their actions. Haminiim, which will withhold the forces of Malachi Ateva, those natural forces. I have Yorte for my mother today. So we will learn Eli Nishmas, Imi Morasi, Miriam Bas Aaron Arya. Lesave Vanyanim, and this will orchestrate events, Lefiagaze wrote, beyond the natural events according to the decrees of what is deserving to, a, to an individual. The Kama Pratim Le Pratim, and there are details for these details, Kafi Niflaot Sitre, Hanagatoy Parakshimo, all according to God's 
English is excellent here. Unfa- unfathomable hidden ways. The wonders of Sitre, of the secrets of Hanagato, of the way that God deals with this world. Yitbarakshimo, blessed is his name. Paragraph 5. Hey. Vulam, who Yitbarach Mashkif Alakol. Don't get distracted. Don't think that these forces are the ones that are actually making decisions and doing things. He is Mashkif. He oversees everything. Elyonim, the higher forces. Tachtonim, lower forces. Sherashim, the roots. Anafim, branches. Umechavein Tamid, and he is constantly guiding everything. El Hashleimut HaKlali, to this ultimate perfection. And it's towards that that everything in this world is leading. Even though, as we said before, it is unfathomable to us how certain events in the world which seem to be so horrific or seem to be leading us in the opposite direction are actually bringing us Ela Shleimut HaKlali. But that's what he said before, the Niflaot Sitre the wonders of the hidden ways of Hashem. And ultimately, we discuss this in a number of other classes. We discuss this in the in the lunch and learn about Purim being the eternal holiday, that ultimately when Mashiach comes, we will understand how every twist and turn was actually leading towards an, a necessary component, a positive step towards that end. V'nechla ka'inyan bifrateha. But this gets broken down by uh, to each individual. This gets broken down in detail based on their particular situation. Sometimes a person will be pushed away. It'll be harder to serve Hashem. And these will be brought closer, easier. These will have to go through difficulties, suffering. Actually, it's fascinating. Litzareif, the term that's used for suffering, is Litzareif is to cleanse, is to purify. By Tzirup Nechoshet, we are we are cleansing it from its impurities. Ve'elulanuach, and others will not go through suffering, but they have they will have an easy, peaceful, restful path. Kol echad, each and every individual, kvi mashera uishi agiyalo. Exactly that which is befitting that it will come to that person. In order, again, Lahakim Klal Habriya Al Hashlemut, in order to bring the Bria, this entire world, to its Shlemut, to its point of perfection. Vav number six, Vihine, who Yiparak Shemo. Now, God, Beard Sono Mishanes Drebreshit. He can change all of the orders of creation, all the natural world, the Chol at any moment, at any time that he wants. The Osen Nisim, the Niflaot, and he can do miracles, wonders, Kechepso, as he wills. I believe Rav Desla says very beautifully that nature is simply miracles that we've grown accustomed to. That's what nature is. An example, the classic example, if we'd see the man falling from the heavens, food from heavens, spaghetti from the sky, meatballs and spaghetti, what was that movie, the kids, kids movie? We'd say it's a miracle, amazing. But instead, when we see incredible fruits and vegetables and trees growing out of the earth, the dirt, we say that that's natural. I was pointing out to one of my grandchildren, we were eating some grapes, and these were full, juicy, delicious grapes, and we're pulling them off this little, little stem that leads to the grape. And I said, do do we realize that all of this juice and all of this sweetness and all the grape found its way through this little stem, and that's how we have this incredible fruit at the other end of it. But that's natural. So it's nature me. is simply miracles that have that we've grown accustomed to. And at any point, God could change that nature and do what we call nisim v'niflaot, miracles and wonders. Bidvarim shonim, 
in all different different ways. Kamoshi Yigzor, as he, God, will decree, Heyoto Naot, that which is proper, fitting, beneficial, Litoelet Habria, for the benefit of this world, Lithia Inyan, Ulithiazman, according to the situation and according to the time. Pesach is coming up. We had all the plagues. And then we had the splitting of the sea on the seventh day. These are all aberrations from the natural flow that, of course, God controls, because nature is simply the miraculous that we've grown accustomed to. And what is it that our sages have said? That God made a condition in Kol Maaseh with the with the creation, right? So it seems that God needed to negotiate with it. What it means, of course, is not that God can't change things at will. Right? God has unilateral control. He might have set up certain rules, but at any point he says, this is my game, and I'm changing the rules. So what is the idea that God made a condition with the with Masa Bereshit at the time of creation? Avalinyan, who? The idea is, at the very time of creation, when these rules and forces were put in place, he showed and he made it known to all the roots of these forces in Yanam, their essence, what they're supposed to do, the purpose for that which they were created. And what they will bring about through all of their actions throughout the history of, of the world. And what will be their end, their ultimate destiny, the English says very nicely. And they understood and they knew. Everything is, everything event is working towards this. This purpose of the ultimate good. And they joined forces. They liked, they were happy with that. And that's what Chazal, the sages say elsewhere. Everything in creation was first asked. With their consent, they were created. Now, when God informed them, Amitat Inyanam Vichukam. The true nature of their powers, their their that which they will affect in the world. Haram Kamokain, he also showed them that at times, in order for them to reach their perfection, to do their role properly, there are times that miracles must take place. Israel for Israel as a whole. Or for specific tzadikim, righteous individuals, botamas manim. So the water was given its flow, 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 flow. But kriyatiamsuf, the splitting of the sea, instead of flowing, pile up and make walls on either side and dry out as the children of Israel pass through. So they have their their nature, their normal flow. And there are times when that will be interrupted in order for the purpose of creation at that time, at that place, to reach its fruition. This was all said at the Sharashim Ha'elyonim, at the highest roots, at the highest spiritual places where the forces begin and then work their way link by link by link down to this world. The Akhare came and afterwards, Al P calls that based on all of this, Nishtal Shu Behishtal Shulut. It then has its sequence down one one link after another link after another link after another link. The Nikvu Advarim Bagashmiyut until finally it works its way down into our physical world, the nikva'u hadvarim, and these matters became established, begashmiyot, here in our physical world, 
karaui lahem, as it was meant to. Vamdu alehem apikidim, and God appointed those forces, those angels' forces, however we'll describe it, hamach zikim otam b'chukam ha tv strengthens them, supports them, guides them in their natural way. And at the time that the Holy One, blessed is He that God wants, He decrees on these forces, and they will stop, they will desist, they will no longer do their normal job, their normal flow, their normal, what we call natural sequence of events, the yishtanu mi and they will change, they will deviate from their natural flow, kafi mashitiya lehem hagzera, all according to whatever the decree will be. And when we break it down like this, we recognize that hakol bide shamayim, in other words, Right, there is no nature. Nature is what God says should continue to act as nature until God says, no, it should no longer act in such a natural way. And then there are the deviations of nature. Some are long-lasting, some are short-lived. But it's all coming from Hashem. Ein od milvado, as we focus on our Simchas Torah uh, avoda. Ein od milvado. It's all coming from God. It might work work its way down through these different forces, but ain od milvado. Ukvar efshar shahagaat hagzeira lahem tiyev drachim shonim. This decree that reaches these these natural forces to cause them to change that can come in different manners. Perush, meaning, shetagia, derech mashal, it will give a parable, kemitzvat melech alehem, o kega'arat moshel shezaam. Sometimes it can happen, right? There, we have different terms for rulers. One term is a melech, the other term is a moshel. But there are never synonyms in Hebrew. Each one, in Lashon HaKodesh, I should say, each one has a different flavor, a different response to it. A melech, what we define as a king, a moshel is a ruler. A melech is one who is working with the people. The people accept that individual or that power as their king, as their ruler. Whereas a moshel is one who imposes his force on others. That's what the like Pasuk it. says, ki la Hashem ha Umoshel Bagoyim. God really has the Melucha. God is the Melech, and all should be accepting him. However, Umoshel Bagoyim. But he must impose his rule on the nations because they don't necessarily accept him. And as we say at the end of Aleinu every time, ultimately God will be the Melech over all the land. It's not just saying he'll be the ruler. But it means he'll be the accepted, beloved ruler over all the land. So, so coming the, back over here. I'm sorry. So is the Moshel considered like of dictators and things that people don't accept that you just have to go by? Is Correct. That what you mean? Uh, 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 the Moshel is a term that's used when a person is imposing his will or a force is imposing its force over unwilling subjects. Okay. That is a, a, a Moshel. That is a ruler. Okay. Interesting. Moshel and Mashal, parable, oh. have the same root. Moshel, Mashal, yeah. I wonder why that will be. Huh. Well, interesting. I wonder yeah. if Moshel comes from the comes from the root me shell. Who? From that of. From of, yeah. Right? Me from shell, that of. So a parable is from that of. I'm giving you something, right, that from that we can understand this. Um, yeah. Extracting a certain part, me shell, from that in order to make it more understandable. Whereas a Moshe is 
also Michel, from that of, meaning he is taking the powers that people are supposed to have, and he is taking that Michel from that of, from them. I don't know. It just, sounds good. Just conjecture. You. Sorry? I said, sounds good. I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> don't believe me. I'm, this, this is all just... um. This is all just guesswork. So but over here we have a mashal. It could be kemitzvat melech alehem. It could be like a king commands, and it is done in a peaceful manner. O kigarat moshel shezaam, or like the cry of a of of a ruler, a tyrant shezaam who is angered. Kinyan shenemar, as it says. In Tehillim, King David says, Vayigar biyamsuf, God shouted at Yamsuf at the sea. This is when we were passing through on the seventh day of Pesach, right? That's why we have this Yom Tov on the last day. The seventh day of Pesach is the day of the Kriyat and the splitting of the sea and passing through. Vayecharav, and it became dry. Chayotzeh v'zem adrachim, and all different such manners all based on the fia inyan bismano, on the time and the circumstances. So I, I don't really understand by like, what this means, quite honestly. That when is God going to be doing it like a uh, a king in a gentle manner, or doing it in an angry manner? Maybe right, like, because God's in absolute control over all these things. He doesn't need to get angry, right? But maybe sometimes it happens in an abrupt fashion. That's what we would that's what we describe like the splitting of the sea, right? The waters were raging and we were at the edge of the sea and the Egyptians are on the other side. And in an abrupt fashion, the waters split and we went through and we finished going through. The Egyptians followed us in there. And then as soon as we left that area back onto dry land, then the waters came crashing back down. So maybe that's what he means by Bizam that this change in nature can be a very, very abrupt, abrupt change, a harsh, abrupt change, or it could be more of a, a, a gradual, perhaps peaceful change, right? In other words, let's say the man falling from the heavens. So that was more of a peaceful, like a melech, a benevolence of of a change in the nature so maybe may perhaps that's what he means by sometimes that it comes in different ways it could be like the command of a king or like the 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 angry shout of or the english the angry the tirade of an angry tyrant right yeah. right i imagine that's all in the way that we would perceive it is it is it this abrupt, harsh, the water split, we go through, the waters come crashing down, they're all drowning there in the water? Or is it the man gently falling down every morning, covered top and bottom with the dew? That's why on Shabbos we have the covering under it, the covering over our challah, lechem mishnah, right? Perhaps that's what it is referring to. Okay, with that we finish Perik the fifth chapter which is open Ashkacha, the ways of Ashkacha, and the next chapter is Seder Hashkacha, which is the system the order Seder we know Seder right we're about to have our Pesach Seder this yeah. uh this Friday night and Saturday night so Seder is the system the order of the Hashkacha, how it how, how that how that comes about and even though it's a little bit early, with your permission, I think we'll, uh, it's a good place to stop over here. Next Monday on Chalamot, we won't be studying, so we will resume the Monday after Pesach. So it makes sense for us to start a new chapter when we do that uh, two weeks from today. Sounds great. Okay. Thank you. Robin, thanks for joining in all the way from, all the <laughs> way from Michigan and Cheryl all the way from Willow Tree. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Be well, everybody. Have a good week. If I don't speak to you before, see you before. Have a chad kosh v'sameach. Have a wonderful week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Be well. Bye. You too.